All right, folks, getting ready to show you a tip that you should do anytime you're getting ready to plant um, green beans or corn. What you want to do is you want to take a bowl with clean water in it the night before that you're going to plant these. It's about 11 o'clock at night. All I'm going to do is open these packages up. These seeds were stored in my freezer till, to keep them fresh until I'm ready to use them. And now what I want you to do is dump the seeds into these bowls of water. I usually do about 12 hours, which means that I have plans to have these planted by noon tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to get up early, get them done first thing in the morning, and then I got to go get some stuff. So, my beans are now in water. I've got two different kinds of corn. Going in water. Now this is Memorial Day weekend. It's Friday night. Funny thing is, I remember when a packet of corn this size used to plant a couple rows of corn, and now you're lucky if it'll plant one. So this is actually uh, Silver Queen, sad. And then I always leave the package under the bowl because you'd be amazed how quickly you can forget what's in each bowl if you don't do that, uh, at least for me. Now, switch sides here. Of course, now I can't tell. This is a uh, bilicious hybrid corn. It's kind of a, a white and a yellow mix. I did these last year for the first time. And they seem like they grew pretty well. So here I go. I got the corn in water. I know which bowls is which. I got my beans in water. I'll bring you back tomorrow when I go to plant this. So the reason that you're doing this, these seeds have really hard shells on them. By soaking them in the water, it softens the shell. And then when you plant them, they germinate quicker. Days, two to three days sometimes, instead of a week to two weeks, you know, depending on how much rain you get, which here lately we've had like 40 days of rain, 40 nights or something like that. But I do this every year. I do this on Memorial Day weekend. That's when I plant my beans and corn in the state or commonwealth of Kentucky. So uh, hopefully this tip helps you out. Again, I'll bring you back tomorrow when we plant it. And this is the next morning. You can see that they the seeds have swelled up some. It's been about... Well, it's 10.34 and I think it's about 11 last night, so I'm getting a little bit of a late start. I intended to do this about 8 o'clock this morning and things come up more important. So, anyways, getting ready to take these outside and plant them and I'll take you out there and show you how I do that too. This is the seating square. Um, I don't think I've ever reviewed this. I've had this now. This is like the third or fourth year that I've had it. And this thing is awesome when you're doing a raised bed garden. It's basically pre-made holes where you lay this down and then you use the um, depth gauge to put a holes in the soil and then you just drop the seeds in. And 
on my garden I've got four by fours on the inner part of the bed so I have to initially lay it down like this and then make the first square now corn is four corn is four plants per foot so if you look on here and find the one collar that has four which is blue those are the ones that I do and I because of the first one I have to skip it now what I do is I press down on the edge and then that shows me where I need to go again so I just go down through here and create all the holes and really I don't use the depth gauge probably as well as I should I poke it in there until I think that it seems right and then I go on so you get the idea right then you can see the line I come over and I just do the next one and so on so I usually for like corn and beans I don't use the actual there's a uh, little seed scooper on the end of the depth thing and it works very well for small seed like think of like lettuce or just really really small seeds that's where it works best so then I just go back drop the seed into the hole So on a 4x8 bed, you basically have 8 squares, 4, 4 per square, so that would be 32 seeds. Uh, now the ones that didn't get down in the hole far enough, I usually just take my finger and poke them a little bit. And then I, I do this and I don't really cover them up until after I get all the seeds planted because it's just easier. If I cover them up now, I end up wiping out these lines and it's just easier to keep your rows straight to just keep going. I think I already did these, but yep. Now I was kind of skeptical when I first started using the seating square thing, like how is that really going to save me any time type deal, but it actually does. Um, and it makes the garden easier to, uh, to tell where like weeds are growing or something like that. If you got weeds that start growing before your plants come up I got a few high spots in this bed I should have fixed but too late I've had people ask me why that goat is always like that and it's because she's bottle fed like that's what you get when you get a bottle fed baby goat even though she's a year old she still has that I need attention I need all the attention give me all the attention Ed and I just have to ignore her because if I didn't I would never get anything done I mean it, it really gets to be aggravating so uh, when you all want an aggravating goat get you a bottle fed goat 
he will regret it. I'm just going to go ahead and do them all now. It's just easier for me sometimes to just do all the holes. Then go back and fill them in. Now, my beds have widened some over the years, so they don't really come out to be an exact four foot. You can see there's probably about an inch gap. here on this last row but that's okay man it's gonna be a scorcher today I can tell that already too I think it's supposed to get like 87 or something Now, if you're doing the three sisters, what I usually do, I'm not doing it this year. What I usually do is I go ahead and poke the four holes for the corn. And then in the center, I put a pole bean. And sometimes I'll do uh, two or three holes in the center for the pole beans. And then that way you're ensuring that, you know, maybe if you have one that doesn't come up or something, you're not wasting a square. So I really like a seeding square thing. So the reason why I do this to add the water to the corn, that reduces the, the amount of time that like birds have got to come and eat all your corn seeds because they won't eat them once they sprout. And generally this will sprout and just a few days. So, what I do after this, I take and cover it with straw, and then I take a garden hose and spray the bed down. And the straw also makes it harder for the animals to come back and eat your seeds before they sprout. Now if I have extra seeds like I do every year, I will take and still plant the seeds in another bed. Usually where my cool weather, if I still have cool weather crops, this time of year, I'll go ahead and plant corn like at the end of the row, all the way across the end. So that way the corn grows up and blocks the sun, gives them some shade while I finish out the harvest. And that seems to work out pretty good because I've got, looks like probably another row of seeds here. I'm just checking now to make sure that all the seeds are down in the holes. enough all right so once I've got that done I basically just lightly cover them I don't spend a lot of time like trying to pack it down or anything like that just disturb the soil enough to cover them up I don't mark the rows because if I need to know where the rows at, let's say like if something happened and they didn't come up like in a week, I would just take and hold the square over the end of the bed and figure out where the rows are at. I mean, not that I could do anything by then, but you still get the idea, right?
I basically just shake hay out on top of it. Well, this is actually straw, I'm sorry. I said hay, I don't know how many times, but it's really straw. And what this does is this provides some protection for the seeds, but also what it does is it keeps the water from evaporating when it rains because raised beds, you have to water the beds often. So with raised beds, you have to, you have to water them quite often. Um, because the because they're above the ground the soil gets warmer quicker which has advantages you know you can you can plant earlier in the year because of that usually but um, but you get the idea the straw will reduce the amount of waterings you have to do on a raised bed because it controls the evaporation of the water. And also it breaks down and creates basically compost also. So it's supposed to rain this afternoon. Actually probably in about another two hours. Um, normally once the straw is down I would take and come back and water it, but since it's going to rain, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I'll let nature water it. So, that's basically how I do it. It's kind of the same thing. I, you know, I got another bed of corn I'm going to do. I've got a bed of beans. Uh, the beans on the seeding square take nine squares per foot instead of four like the straw. And, uh, It'll just go really quick. And plus, I'm pretty certain that I'm getting to be deep into this 28 minutes of video I've recorded just outdoors, not counting the inside stuff, that I gotta chop down to 12 or 13 minutes. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed my goat yelling at me nonstop. Hope you enjoyed the rooster over there. And, uh, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.